Hi there guys, how's it going? So hopefully you've seen Khan Gaming's video on how to make a piston robotic arm. If you haven't, check the link in the description. I'll link it to you. It's a very handy video. In this video, I'm going to show you how you can do a similar thing using a bearing and a controller. If you look at the spud guns, it will let you do this kind of thing. So you can tilt the arm that whatever it is that you want rotate in perfectly on a push button so for me i've set it up to spud guns the reason being it's a handy little user controlled turret for when those hay bots are attacking i've got it on a bit of a loop to shoot i can turn on and off but i can also angle this to however i want to angle it show you how to do that right now nice and simple so first things first i will show you how you can rotate your platform using nothing but a controller and a seat so if you don't know if you have bearings in a row you run them off a controller it increases the rotation speed so obviously one bearing can rotate so fast and then if you add another bearing on top of that it'll kind of up the rotation speed again and then a third bearing etc etc all the way this is how bearing cars are made if you go check out people's videos about how they make bearing cars they might explain it to you but for me i'm just going to use three bearings we don't want to go over the top or nothing too wild so this is going to be our rotating platform that we're going to put our seat on that's going to swing the whole thing round. Nice and easy, chuck a seat on it, connect the seat up to the controller. So now we've got to set up our controller. In our controller, we, we want kind of fine-tuned turning, so I'm going to look at doing sort of... I'm going to look at 10 degrees and this basically means it will kind of rotate in 10 degree intervals that you won't notice when you're in the seat but it will enable you to spin around and when you stop it will kind of go to the closest 10 degrees so set it to a small interval put the loop on connect the controller to the seat have all the bearings facing the same way and all set up the same now if we jump on and i press forwards we'll rotate slowly in one direction and if i let go it'll go to the nearest 10 degrees if I press back, we will rotate in the opposite direction. And if I let go, we'll stop at the closest 10 degrees. So that is how you move this thing left and right. But what about those there cannons? How do we get those working? Okay, so that's nice and easy. We're going to pull out a little bit of a platform here. And this is where we're going to put our sort of cannon rotation. So obviously, they need a bearing to pivot on. And then we need a block. You don't really need this block, I suppose. If you could wedge in your spud guns in there, you're okay. But I'm just going to do a block, and I'm going to stuff my spud guns on here. And due to the weight, it's going to fall down. Okay, so the system for the spud gun rotation, you are going to need four logic gates. So you need three to create a loop. And then you need one to control the controller. The reason why we need that one to control the controller is without it, our controller will only ever rotate in one direction. So that will help us rotate in the opposite direction. Then I'm going to need two push buttons to let us go one way or the other way. Okay. So this is how we set this up. We need to set this loop up so it's kind of a pulsing loop. So you have one and gate. And the AND gate goes into an OR gate. That OR gate then goes into a NOR gate. And that NOR gate goes back to the AND gate. Okay, so that's what you should have right now. It should be flying around, pulsing as it goes, lovely jubbly. Then we go from the NOR gate into a separate logic block. Now, as it is right now, this logic block is an AND gate and it is currently pulsing. I have often had problems with this where this AND gate will not pulse and it has kind of caused me complications with the system. So I have turned this to an OR gate. Okay. Then we need to set up the controller and that's simply from that last NOR gate into the controller and from the controller to the bearings that our spud guns are on. Then we need to set up our controller. So what you want to do is put the controller on slow then put the rotation of the spud guns that you want. So for me, I only really need them to rotate 90 degrees in the negative direction. So that all they're going to do is basically rotate from the current position. 90 degrees means that they'll be pointing down. 
that's simple i don't need them to point up because i like to mount this higher up so yeah whatever anyway in terms of hooking up the push buttons this is really easy one push button hooks directly to the nor in the loop the second push button hooks to the nor in the loop and also to the or gate that's on its own So if you look at that spud gun controller, if we press one push button, it will go down. If we let go, it will stop. If we press the second, it will go back up and it will stop when we let go. It can't go any higher than what the controller is set to zero, if you like. This likewise, it will go all the way down until it gets to 90. And then once it gets to 90, it can't go any further. Not because it's hitting the ground, it's because it literally can't go any further. We've told it not to go any further than 90. So, it's that simple, then obviously you connect those two push buttons to the seat, and if we jump on, we have controls. So, number two lifts it up, number one puts it down, forwards, turns us right, backwards, turns us left. Really, really that simple. And how do you set up the firing sequence? Well, if you remember my repeater circuit that I showed you guys a while back, I, I did it like this. So, I use a timer. I use a NAND gate and I use an OR gate and I literally go in a loop and then all we need to do is connect any of those up to our spud guns and obviously they're firing like crazy which isn't really what we want so we'll put a switch in connect the switch the spud guns are off. Connect the switch to the seat. Bosh. Jump in the seat. So we now have left rotation and right rotation. We can control our spud guns up and down. And we can now turn our firing on and off. Now obviously that's quite quick. So if we want to, we can go into our timer and we can slow this down. So we're not racing through spuds. It's easy to go through a lot of spuds if you're using that timer and that is simply how you can make a really simple turret or how you can control the tilt of a bearing by a push button it's fun it's easy and i hope you guys can find some unique ways and fun ways to use this system whether it's to alter the end of a piston crane or a grabber or anything like that but it just adds that little bit of delicate control that you might need you don't have to run this rotation off of a controller. If you want to, you can run it off of a motor. It makes it spin around a little bit more controllable rather than setting it by degrees. You can set it by one degrees if you like, but that will be kind of real slow. So if you run it off of a motor, you will get a little bit more fine tuning. Also, if you run it off of a motor, you don't need three bearings. Just stick it on one bearing and it's all good. So there you go. Nice and simple controlled tilt thanks for watching guys i hope you enjoyed and i hope you can utilize this and i will see you next time bye for now see ya